All right. So, uh, Bradley, you guys announced a whole bunch of new features yesterday for Google Plus. Maybe give us a quick rundown of what's new. Sure. It was an exciting into. day, sort of a awkward day to be out of the office. I had, you know, 50 chat moles open and was sort of monitoring the launch in real time. So thanks um, for making it all the way to New York oh, for no, this. They, so. This is a pleasure. <laughs> and, uh -huh. uh, the guys did a fantastic job. It was a really wonderful and successful launch. We really launched three different categories of uh, new and um, some expected and some unexpected things. Um, the first thing is search. And uh, search dramatically changes the center of gravity of our product. And I think the way we've implemented it is really uh, different and clever. Um, you can type in whatever you would type into Google. You can type in a search for kite surfing, for instance, and get a list of results. But they're not results so much as social objects. So in situ, you can plus one those things. You can comment on those things. You can share those things to your own circles. So it sort of creates an interest stream uh, and an interest graph as well as the social graph. So you can save all of those searches and they become sort of bona fide stream elements in your left nav. So um, this is something that is really powerful. Um, we're just getting started. We have a lot of plans for what we will do in search ultimately. But I think already we're seeing tremendous usage and um, the stats of people trying search and trying things out are really encouraging and exciting. Well, it's very nice because it becomes an algorithmic list. And of course the shift from explicit list to algorithmic yeah. uh, was such a powerful thing in the early days of the web. And, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a really good point. We've taken some amount of uh, flack for having a suggested user list. I told people great remedies to this are coming. Search is one of them. You can type in kite serving and increasingly will show you experts both within your circles and people socially connected to you that are, mm -hmm. are experts on the topic, but will also show you sort of objective ex experts by algorithmic analysis of their posts and what they're talking about. So that's going to get better and better, uh, but we'll be able to connect you to people yeah. around interests as well as around sort of real life social connections. I think it's going to be interesting too to think about what would be the equivalent of Flickr's interestingness algorithm and have that be a, a, a sort of a baked in class of search. We do think about that. Yeah. Um, so that's just one thing we launched yesterday. Yeah. Uh, a second big category of launch was Hangouts. And we really doubled down on Hangouts. And, and again, this is not the sum total of what we'll be doing with Hangouts, but we, we launched a number of really important features. The first is mobile support, so that people can join Hangouts and participate wherever they are. Um, so cameras that support front-facing, our phones that support front-facing cameras can actually participate in Hangouts remotely, and that's fantastic, you know, pursuant to the fact that you have the bandwidth and can actually, you know, carry the load of, of multi-way video. That is something I want to come back to later, you know, the future of Google Plus in yep. a world where we have a lot more mobile bandwidth. Yeah. Let's, let's bookmark that. But we're, you know, we're getting ahead of the curve there. We know this is the world we're all going to live in, and so we felt that mobile support was important as soon as we could offer it. That's just one of the features. Another one was support for what we're calling Hangouts with Extras. And the Extras include things like screencasting so that I can display not only my face, but sometimes what's more interesting is what I want to show you and sort of demonstrate either a product demonstration or co-surfing, if you will. So um, document sharing, so support for Google Docs that we can actually be in a doc together in the Hangout talking about it and editing it. Which must make it doubly difficult for all those uh, uh Google Enterprise users who want to get in there. <laughs> oh, the action. knife in the heart. Uh, yeah, uh, we're working on that. That was not one of the remedies we announced yesterday, but we're well aware of the pain, and uh, we're working on that as fast as we can. Other Hangouts features, broadcast Hangouts. You know, sometimes it's great to hang out with mm -hmm. uh, a small group of people, but there are certain celebrities in the world that would like to hang out with, you know, nine of their super fans and could attract an audience of 100,000 people that would be interested in sort of looking over their shoulder at that interaction. So we're doing Hangouts on Air. And so this is one of the most uh, frequent requests is that Hangouts fill up really fast and people feel like they're missing out on the party. Imagine, pursuant to the uh, hoster's intention, you could actually broadcast the Hangout so the people that weren't there in the room could at least sort of lurk and, and participate that sure. way. Um, Hangouts as a platform was another thing we launched yesterday, which has huge opportunities. So the framework for doing things like co-watching video or co-editing uh, a document is really a platform. And there's all kinds of gaming applications, whiteboarding applications, um, even more creative things than that that I've already seen that people can build on top of Hangouts. So we really um, 
showed our investment in Hangouts, and it's part of the, the stack that we're really going to build out and make available for people to innovate on. The, the third thing that we launched yesterday is probably the most significant thing and, and really, again, changes how we think and I think people should think about the product, and that was to open it up in beta to everyone. So it has been a small invite-only service to date where we... Small for some value of small. For some value of small, you know. Um, we're here talking about big data. So, you know, for these guys, it's a small number. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we met the need. We, we learned enough in the field trial uh, to put the fixes in place. We'd done over 100 uh, features in the last 90 days and opened it up. And so once you open it up, it opens up opportunities for product integrations and um, really to invite users in. Uh, we feel like we're ready now. So uh, good uptake? Oh, yeah. It's been a thrilling 24 hours. Um, you know, we think about this in terms of improving the experience for Google's users. And it's not as if we're a startup that, you know, is... Um, unknown to these users, they're already on Google. You know, most of the world, most of the internet world uses a Google service, whether it's Google search, obviously, uh, YouTube, Gmail, Blogger. Uh, so we have a, a fairly large footprint. Um, but typically when users come to us, they sort of come to us in the dark. We don't really know who they are. We don't know what they care about. We don't know who their friends are. And this is really an opportunity for users to introduce themselves to Google and sort of move into the light. And I think we can provide some extraordinary value to them for doing that and some great services that we can't do if we're just sort of groping with cookies and IP addresses to sort of do language preferences. That's a pretty weak value proposition. And I think we can do much better. And so um, we will bring on users, I think, as we create valuable differentiation for them. Things like Hangouts, I think, are one great example. But we're not worried about numbers. I think we will get to large numbers over time when we can demonstrate the value to users. So lots been made out of your competition with Facebook, um, you know, with Twitter. Um, you know, obviously, Facebook uh, is feeling that they pre-announced some features that you would have thought they would have left for F8 uh, at the same time as you made your announcements yesterday. Uh, means that they're obviously trying to steal a little bit of your media thunder. Um, how do you see that competition shaping up, or, and how much do you think about that in, uh, in your own strategic planning? I mean, is this... I mean, there's competition. I mean, I think it's good for users. That's one thing that's really gratifying to see, is that I think users win, and I think this has been largely acknowledged that this is going to be an exciting year and great for the industry and great for users, which is fantastic. Um, we have a very strong plan for what we want to do with our service. And uh, that's not to say we're sort of tone deaf. I think the competitive environment informs sort of strategy in a, in a long-term sense. But uh, right now, it actually feels really great to sort of be um, clear in what we want to do and to see flattering uh, uh, changes in the market as a result of the features we've launched. Mm -hmm. um, you couldn't ask for more. I want to talk a little bit about uh, there's two aspects to a lot of these technologies, and certainly uh, more overlap here with Twitter than with Facebook. I think Facebook has generally kept to its uh, roots as uh, focused on smaller groups, uh, whereas Twitter started out with this sort of ambient intimacy uh, model, and yet it became a broadcast model uh, relatively quickly. Uh, you have the same dynamic in Google+. Plus. The initial appeal was with circles that you could organize, uh, you know, uh, groups of people that you knew uh, around particular topics, your family, the people you work with, so on. And this idea of circles is certainly at the very, mu very much at the heart. And yet I find myself uh, generally posting uh, to public, which is uh, everybody, anybody right. who wants to listen. And uh, I'm finding enormous levels of engagement. It's a fantastic platform that way. I'm, what's the balance? How many people are using it for the ambient intimacy with circles, and how many are, of them are doing public postings? So that is a great question, and I will say you are an outlier. Not everyone has as many <laughs> friends as you or <laughs> the same agenda as you. Yeah. Um, let me share what we designed yeah. and what we are seeing with the data. Um, our ambition has always been to up-level the model so that we could support 
the wonderful value of asymmetric uh, fanning so that, you know, if there's a celebrity that I'm interested in or a brand, I could express that. No, brands can't really be on there yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's coming too. Uh, Despite people who want to claim that their brand name is their real name. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> so, you know, we want to we want to support that case. That's an important case. And that sort of asymmetric relationship is something that works and it works for a number of use cases. But we also wanted to support the real life faceted intimate sharing where you actually are speaking to a room of people that you know and trust. And um, that's really the value of circles. Um, the challenge, and this is a, a real challenge, and I think part of the, the gambit that we made in launching the product and why we wanted to do a field trial um, was to understand if you could have one product that really met both use cases and not mm -hmm. confuse users and not overwhelm users. You know, trying to be all things to all people is sort of the bane of product management. This is exactly the, the path to hell. Um, could we do it? Could we create a user interface and a model and verbiage and terminology and experiences that actually made it clear to users what was going on? And I think the feedback we've gotten from the field trial validates that the circle model works it is as good for a shout, that's you, as it is for a whisper, which is how most users are using it right now. Mm -hmm. And so, so can you give us a sense of the, the, the stats on yeah. respective users? So what's fascinating is in terms of content shared, it is twice as likely that content is shared privately to circles as publicly to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a two to one ratio and it's actually trending up. It's between two and three now. People are, seem to be doing more private sharing. Um, that's not true for everyone. Uh, again, you've said that mm -hmm. you find more value in public sharing and I think that that's a valid use case and it works for you. Um, but even there, I have to say that uh, circles become very useful, uh, plus the ability to name individual users because I can bring it to the attention of someone who I specifically want to make sure sees it by adding them uh, by name or by adding a circle. Right. Uh, so I can go, okay, I want people in my company to make sure to read this. Exactly. I can, I, you, know, you can sort of tap them yeah. on the shoulder and, and yeah, give them and a Yeah, I do think there's some interesting models there. Now, obviously, there's a, a lot to learn here. I mean, about yeah. how to, do we actually model social interaction? It's not, yeah. not entirely clear. It's really complicated. And I think I even still would love to see, uh, you know, something I've wanted ever since, uh, you know, we began this social conversation is somebody take all the data from my email and messaging and phone and, uh, and say, okay, who's your real social network? <laughs> we actually know that because yeah. the tedious aspect of all this is still constructing that right. manually. Yeah. And, um, you know, we uh, have some big plans in that regard. I, mm -hmm. I completely concur. Um, given, I mean, you need tools to manage and control it, but it'd be sure great yeah, to have it's the user's aid. data. They yeah. should be able to put it to work in their service. And right now, we don't do a great job of that. We have recommendations, but those recommendations are, are sort of an undifferentiated, rank-ordered list right now, and you have to hunt, peck, and aggregate. But and effectively, drag. you know, with something like Priority Inbox, you're doing that same job over in Gmail. Yeah. I think, again, we, we have great data that, mm -hmm. that can really help with this. I think you mentioned phone. I think, you know, mm -hmm. the phone is the latent social network who you really care about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the user's data. And so we, we just have to create the mechanisms to sort of reflect that back to them and make it easy. We're working on it and we'll have improvements soon. How big is the engineering team working on all this? Um, it's hard to sort of draw a circle around Google Plus because the way we think about it is an infrastructure, a, a service, a fabric for making Google users' experiences better across what they do. So we have a core team that's sort of working on that platform. Uh, I'm not going to share the number with you. We fit into a pretty large building. Um, but uh, I really think increasingly you're, you're starting to see Google act as one. And uh, all of Google is sort of aligning around this um, because it's, it's better for users. There's things that you can do uh, when we know who our users are and what they care about and who they know um, that are hard for stovepiped separate uh, divisions to mm -hmm. do. And so there's been, I think, partly as a result of the, the field trial, a huge alignment of interest at Google. And yep. uh, the team uh, is really galvanized the, the entire so force. Here's kind of a, a question that I think is a difficult one. Uh, the social fabric that you're building across all of Google products uh, clearly has the potential to deliver uh, value to users. 
and yet you're now starting to touch uh, the user on so many points that you could be accused of uh, trying to use one uh, you know, product to drive people to another product. You know, so a great example of this I found in my own experience was um, with the phone now automatically uploading photos to Google. I found myself, well, I really should get on Picasa. Uh, you know, I've t traditionally uploaded my photos manually to Flickr, and now, of course, well, I don't need to do that. They're already just uploaded automatically. You know, there's sort of this integration. I go, it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I, I really love it because I now no longer have to worry about backing up my photos. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you guys are getting more and more of people's data, and, and of course, uh, that makes some people nervous. How do you guys think about that and what your responsibility is to be... Uh, you know, fair to other vendors to uh, not uh, create, you know, because obviously there is a, a areas where it's perfectly legitimate to compete with other people, but there's also, there's a tipping point where you start to say, well, we got to play by different rules. Where yeah. are you on that spectrum? I think about it very carefully yeah. and with lawyers in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and not on stage. Which I yeah, not on stage is sort of my policy on this. Um, but I will say that... Um, Google has a really good long tradition mm -hmm. of being open and you know I think we put the user first and so the integrations for instance the instant upload feature of your Android phone mm -hmm. which beams photos to Google um, is an optional feature it's something that doesn't preclude you from putting your photos in Flickr it's not sort of a, a stovepipe which sort of your you yeah have they to, go, they disappear off your phone and you, go into right, Google and right they, yeah so yeah, sure. um, and it's tremendously valuable I think that's the most important thing is you know we've asked people and done a lot of user research how many of you have photos that are trapped on your phone and sort of never make it to the people that would love to see them everyone to a person raises their hand. Um, not to mention that, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I cycle through a lot of phones, probably more than you guys. <laughs> Including um, one you gave to me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's a funny story. But, um, you know, uh, it's sort of good to sort of get the stuff to the cloud, right? Yeah. It's sort of good to sort of liberate it into that great film strip in the sky. Mm -hmm. And so there's just a ton of user value to doing this and doing it right. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that yeah. the photos can't go to other services or you can bounce them from the cloud mm -hmm. to other services. Those things are in our DNA. Uh, but I yeah. think, you know, we, we think about user first yeah. and, uh, and that usually serves us. Uh, picking up on that uh, phone story, I think it's maybe worth unpacking a little bit. I remember it was probably 15 years ago, maybe longer. I remember uh, Bill Joy... Uh, yeah, talking to somebody about cloud storage, which at the time didn't really, wasn't really called cloud, uh, of his data, and people were worried, oh, is this secure? And I remember him holding up his laptop at a conference saying, no, I'm worried about but when my data's on this. Yeah, I could lose it. You know, we really are moving to a world in which data is going into the cloud. And this example I mentioned that Bradley gave me uh, his phone, I was asked, I said, gee, you know, can I check out the new uh, uh, Nexus S? And he, he, he says, oh, yeah, why don't you just take this one and let me wipe it? And, <laughs> and he hands it to me because, of course, all his data was there in the cloud. And he just needs to go back to the office and start up a new phone to get his phone back. And it's been wiped. And I sign into my Google account. And suddenly, it's my phone again. And I've switched from my old Nexus 1 to the Nexus S. Um, that seems to me to be the future of an awful lot of the technology we're working about at, um, yeah. you know, where we are moving to a device-independent world, uh, a world in which, uh, you know, uh, some cloud app somewhere remembers who we are and we have a token that we give, you know, whether it's a login or eventually it might be, uh, you know, other things. And just magic happens. But we're still at the early edge of that, um, you know, because I, I can really start to imagine a world in which, uh, first of all, there are a lot more sensors around. You know, my car recognizes me as well mm -hmm. as my phone. My uh, my house recognizes me. My office recognizes me, and uh, you know once the data is really in the cloud, uh, you know and it doesn't really matter. You know, sort of like you know you could easily imagine a, you know in the science fiction imaginings, I I imagine a you know a Google autonomous vehicle that also has a sort of uh, connect like functionality, and it's looking at the, you know. Uh, face recognition and gate recognition and the like, and it says, oh, oh, yeah, you said that uh, Bradley could use your car, and he walks <laughs> up and it unlocks itself. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, 
you know, it's science fiction, and yet it's very much within the realm of capability, all done through this idea of data in the cloud. Do uh, you have any crazy thoughts of your own about where all this is going? Yeah, I love it. I mean, <laughs> I, this is the world we're living in. We're at the dawn of this world. It's so cool that we all have these smartphones in our pockets, which really, you know, think of if we work together. You know, we have an array of microphones here. Um, what could we do with a microphone array like that, mm -hmm. you know, if we chose to and opted in to sort of donating my sensor to the collective yeah. good? Um, I think there's thrilling applications that we haven't begun to think about yeah. in terms of um, what we can do when we sort of light this up. And it, I, I think the phone example is a good one just because it sort of commoditizes these things. There's going to be sensors like dust everywhere, right? And yeah. uh, to sort of harness those um, is going to be a great opportunity to collect vast amounts of data and then return that as killer apps. Yeah. I mean, do we need body area networks so we can have uh, lighter weight devices that then just use the phone for connectivity? Yeah. yeah. I, think that, I think that that's cool. And I, I think that um, what's exciting is, I think you're right that sometimes, you know, where we live, both literally and figuratively, we're sort of in science fiction, we're sort of at the bleeding edge of that curve, and it's sometimes, you know, look at just browser share statistics, it's sort of cold water in the face to realize that a lot of people are still um, not on that bleeding edge with us, and we sort of have to deal with the fact that the Google audience represents billions of people, and we sort of have to make sure we're creating products that work for them and not just yeah. living in the echo chamber of always-on sure. connectivity and a new smartphone every week and... You know, that's that's not the way the rest of the world is. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, already there's certainly a lot of evidence from developing countries that they're way ahead of us in certain that's ways really in, true. in yeah. uh, phone apps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I would just, my own view on technology adoption is that uh, it takes care of itself. If you have something that's really revolutionary, it does spread. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and, I, it's a, certainly Larry Page's view. I mean, yeah. one of Google's principles is build for the power user, and then I added my own corollary and make all your users power users. That's mm -hmm. the way to think about it is sort of you're not building for that leading edge at the exclusion of the rest of the world. You're sort of getting ahead. You're skating to where the puck is going, and you're sort of acknowledging that all of these trends are going to take things in that direction. So that's what I, I try to do. I know that um, at Google you don't like to talk a lot about your data infrastructure or, uh, you know, your algorithms, but can you kind of give us a view of some of the complexity that's under the hood? Uh, you know, what kinds of things do you have to do to make this work yeah. at scale? Um, I'll speak to Google Plus specifically. Mm -hmm. yeah. We built it from the ground up as a highly instrumented product. We, we knew we wanted to make data-driven decisions, and, you know, we are conducting lots of experiments and tweaks to our algorithms and user experiences and doing a lot of testing um, which is very complex because we have a, a service that is um, contains a lot of components. So it's mm -hmm. not as simple as a conversion funnel or something like that. We we have a lot of agendas that we're trying to serve, mm -hmm. but we really wanted to do that in a data-driven way. We have lots of um, dashboards and uh, a fantastic team of people that are deriving insights from the data that we're seeing. I think uh, you will begin to see those insights reach the light of day. Some of them are, you know, specific to our product, but some of them are um, bleeding edge research in the state of the art of how people are using social networks and I think totally appropriate to make public and share with everyone. And so it's my ambition to make sure that um, that sees the light of day and, and does leave Google. Um, we have a, a research team led by Andrew Tompkins, who's one of the great data scientists and um, He's um, doing a fantastic job deriving insights that are informing the actual product development of our service, and um, you'll, you'll see more from him. All right. Yeah. So um, let me ask you another uh, question. This, uh, with only a, a little minute left, it may be a, a loaded question. I, I know that uh, you're bringing um, a lot of the new phone features to Android phones. Are you gonna, do you anticipate any problems uh, with getting them through on uh, iPhone? from Apple? Um, we have a great iPhone app today. Um, mm -hmm. I think you alluded to um, deeper integrations. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the answer is really, I don't know. If all of the great integrations that you could imagine and, and fantasize about uh, could be achieved on top of the iPhone platform, but I feel 
very pleased with the product that we have in market and it's um, approved and available and uh, I think we have something that's great already. Uh, so uh, I don't want to speculate on another company's in platform or, or products, but I can share that we're delighted with what we have right now. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Bradley. Cool. Look forward to seeing uh, the platform evolve. Thank you. Right, thank you.